we go. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Warrior Wednesday. This is always a fun class because this is my birthday week, and you guys know how we celebrate birthdays around here. It is my gift to you to let you have sore triceps tomorrow. And um, also, this always gives us a great opportunity, especially when someone is as old as me, to really perfect the action of chaturanga. Um, because that's something we do so commonly in these vinyasa classes, but it comes at a point of class where we're moving so quickly that there's not a lot of time to stop and break it down. All right, so today we will be doing, let me do the math, seven sets of eight throughout the class, and then we'll throw in two extra. I did this yesterday in my class, so I'm already sore. I have a disadvantage, so it's great. It's awesome. Um, we're going to start this practice in child's pose, and we're going to start here taking some deep breaths. So use that block or that prop, whatever you have in front of you under your forehead, so that you have a, a sense of some gentle pressure on your forehead. Take your knees wider than you normally do. And if you need padding under your knees, please treat yourself to that. Make yourself comfortable. This pose is a looking inward. So that's what we're gonna start with, coming in. And we'll start with deep breaths that you can feel in the back of your body. Since we'll be using the upper body a lot today, let's direct breath there between the shoulder blades, the outer rib cage. And just let that place fill up like a balloon on your inhale and soften on your exhale. See if you can even feel a light sense of heat with your breath because your breath is trying so hard to open these spaces. And in these first few breaths of our yoga practice today, I'd like you to acknowledge this body, this body as your teacher today. You know, I was reading a book with some quotes of the Buddha recently, and this just really struck me. He was adamant about telling his followers, don't believe me. Find these things out for yourself. Find truth for yourself. He said, and this is paraphrasing, but you must think carefully about what I'm saying and not just listen passively. Find out if I said something wrong for you. <clears throat> think this over. Look for faults and advantages and then make use of it. Make it your own. The teacher is the servant of the student, seeking to provide the students the tools with which to improve and liberate themselves. The teacher is the servant of the student. So I'm here today to facilitate this practice, inviting you to find the answers for yourself. Walk your fingers a little farther forward and then begin to shift your body up into a tabletop. Draw your knees under your hips and let your body sink forward into a kneeling plank. And then we'll exhale back to child's pose. Child's flow, spreading your fingers on the mat and just moving through shoulders and hips with your breath. Because we have a lot of push-ups to do today, we're gonna to start right away. So we're gonna come forward onto our knees and this is the, where you'll need that block or a pillow or a cushion underneath you. And you wanna line it up so that it either touches your chest, your ribs or your belly as you lower down. We'll walk the hands forward, come into this kneeling plank. 
spin your elbows forward and on your exhale, lower down until you feel that block touch and then press back up and that's one. We'll lower halfway and press up. So depending on the size of your body and the length of your arms, you can choose the height of that block. The higher it is, the easier these are. You're gonna to try to keep your tailbone tucked and the motion is as much forward as it is down. And when you come to your eighth push up, sit back again into child's pose. Bring that block under your forehead and just breathe here and notice again breath in the upper back. Inch your fingers forward, pull your tailbone back. Give it a little more space here. <sighs> Hi. I left the door open, didn't I? All right, tuck your toes. This is for Bella. Come into downward facing dog. Maybe you'll join us. You can pedal your heels, shift your weight. And then we'll start to bring our feet forward <clears throat> and move that block out of the way. Come into ragdoll. You're kind of annoying, but I love you. Let your fingers touch your elbows and just hang here. Nice and easy. Exhale. Bella wants to be part of the birthday party. All right, we're going to take this block or pillow, whatever you have, and put it just above your knees between your thighs. Bring your hands to your shins and lift halfway. <clears throat> As we do this, you guys, pull your shoulder blades onto your back and really squeeze those muscles be between your shoulder blades. Exhale, forward fold, let your upper back round. Press to lift, pull your shoulders onto your back. Exhale, lower down. And press to lift one more time. Exhale, lower down. Put that bend in your knees and let's inhale the arms all the way up. Extended mountain, squeeze the block. Cactus your arms and once again, find that space between the shoulder blades. Make it active and strong. Lift your chin, take a deep breath in. <clears throat> Good, and on your exhale, hands to heart, sink down into chair, squeeze that block. Inhale, open your arms. Exhale, hands to heart, sink down. And let's start to move a little more vigorously. We wanna make sure this upper body is plenty warm for these today. Inhale, open, exhale, sink. Start to find ujjayi breath. Two more times. Good, you guys take a deep breath in, arms all the way up. Extend into mountain pose. Let's bend over to the right side. So pull your left arm, squeeze your block. Open that space in your rib cage. Good, inhale, lift and switch. Let's do that again. Press into the feet, squeeze your block, move over to the right side. And lift, move to the left. Come back to center and let your arms lower down to your sides. And then just take your block and place it right where you think you'll need it for those push-ups as we come back around. So it's gonna be right in front of your toes, a few inches back from the top of your mat. All right, so here we go. Sun A, 
Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. You can bring your fingers to your block. Squeeze your shoulders onto your back. Exhale, downward facing dog. As we come forward, the knees drop to the earth, <clears throat> the elbows spin, and we'll do eight yogi push-ups. Again, you can make that block as tall as you need to, to stop when you touch the block. This is teaching you to stop at that halfway point down. And as we finish eight, we always get a break in child's pose so you can pull that block back, relax your arms, breathe into your back. Two sets down. And just feel yourself settling after doing something challenging. We'll rise up to a tabletop and bring that block back, downward facing dog. <laughs> and then step your feet to meet your hands, lift halfway, exhale, fold. Inhale, arms reach high, extended mountain, and bring your hands to your heart. Before we go again, let's do a deep chest stretch. So arms reach behind. <clears throat> Imagine that you're grabbing a big beach ball. You could grab your block or you could interlace your fingers. And then just squeeze back, open front. Take a deep breath here. Arms can be straight down by your hips or lifted a bit. Let your shoulders decide. And then release that, arms come high. Exhale, forward fold. Set the block, inhale, half lift. And exhale, downward facing dog. Sifting forward, drop to your knees. And we have eight yogi push-ups. Set number three. Take your time. Every single time we do one of these, our arms, our shoulders, our upper body gets stronger. Elbows at 90 degrees. And when you get to eight, settle back, bring your block, rest in child's pose. And from here, raise up to tabletop. Tuck your toes, lift into downward facing dog. And then looking forward, the feet come to meet the hands. Move your block, lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Lay down. Inhale, arms overhead, extended mountain. And bring your hands to your heart. All right, friends, hopefully you're getting nice and warm. We're gonna do that one more time. Reach up high, fold forward. Half lift, downward facing dog, shift forward into plank pose. Drop your knees, set your block, eight yogi push-ups. Breathe. 90 degrees. This is an awesome way to keep your shoulders protected. If we go much lower than this, it really puts a lot of strain on the shoulder, the rotator cuff. As you come into child's pose, you can bring the block back. Direct those deep breaths into your upper back again. We're going to pause right here to take a nice little stretch for the upper back. So this is thread the needle. We'll bring our right arm up and out and then sweep it underneath, coming down onto the back of the right shoulder and the right ear. 
can move around with your left hand, your left toes, just trying to find this space behind the shoulder blades. And again, just like we started today, we're directing our breath there to that space. We all have knots there from time to time. It's a great big holding space for stress. Coming back up into a tabletop position, we'll just switch sides. So reaching the left arm up and sweeping through, come onto the back of your left shoulder. Use fingers or toes to help you find that space. Go ahead and come back up to a tabletop position. Tuck your toes and lift into downward facing dog. Deep breath in, long breath out. Looking forward, let your feet come to your hands. Use your block if you like for half lift. Exhale forward, fold, grab the backs of your heels and gently pull yourself down into a stretch. You can keep your knees bent, belly on your thighs if you like. Loosen up your neck. And then with a the bend in the knees, grab your block again, squeeze the block just above the knees, come down into chair pose. And I'd like you to squeeze it with some extra effort. So really hugging into the midline of your body, you'll feel the pelvic floor lift, your low belly engage. We're gonna inhale the arms up, one breath, and sweep the arms behind us, exhale. So feeling the chest and the shoulder blades with this movement. Squeeze your block, sit a little lower. The next time you inhale, reach the arms up, come into a little back bend. And exhale, forward fold. Release the block, place it where it will be for push-ups, lift halfway. Breathe. Step back, downward facing dog. And then come forward onto your knees. Eight yogi push-ups. And if I'm correct, this is set number five. We're getting there. This, is, this will make 40 push-ups. Those of you that are around that age, you should be doing this many every single day, your age in push-ups. Come back, find the block and rest. Walk your fingers forward, stretch it out. And as we come up, let's put the block back in its place. Tuck your toes, downward facing dog. On your inhale, raise the right leg high. Point and flex your foot, circle your ankle. And then bending the knee, come forward, knee toward your chin. Squeeze and hold through the core. Hugging in again to that midline. And then go ahead and set the foot on the outside of the block. So that block's gonna just stay right here on the inside of your right foot. Drop your heel and come up into warrior one stance. Keep your hands on your hips and let's anchor down through the outside edge of that back foot. Move your hips a little bit. See if you can find the place where this hip flexor feels really good and long. The rib cage lifts, the chin and chest lift a bit. Let's bring the arms behind again, open up here into this chest expansion. Take deep breaths. Now 
and release the arms up one big inhale and then hands to the mat downward facing dog shifting forward drop your knees set number six yogi push-ups eight push-ups don't hate me because I'm old love me because I'm not 90 yet and I'll still be teaching when I'm 90 so you'll have to do 90 of these someday I might be watching but <laughs> I'll be making you do them <clears throat> bring your block back stretch it out and breathe into that upper back chest and shoulders. Let your arms come behind you, interlace your fingers, <clears throat> open up your chest here. And if it feels okay to you, you could lose the block and lift up onto the crown of your head. Ujjayi breath. release set the block back in its place come into downward facing dog now let's raise our left leg high point and flex the toes circle the ankle and then shift forward knee to chin hug tight hug the low belly And then let the foot step to the outside of the block, drop the heel, come up with hands on hips for warrior stance. Good. Really push into the outer edge of that back foot. That's so important here. You want as much strength in the back foot as you have in the front. And then the arms reach back, maybe interlace. Breathe here. Chin lifts, chest lifts, heel expansion. And ease your arms up high, warrior one. And release your hands to the earth, downward facing dog. Shifting forward, drop your knees. I believe this is Set seven, here we go. And release your hips back. Bring the block, give yourself a moment of rest here. You can drop your elbows. Direct your breath into the back of your body. So we've done all of our sets of push-ups. We've saved two more. We're at 56 right now. So we've got two more. We'll get to those. From here, just rise up to tabletop position. Hands stacked under shoulders, knees under hips, and move through some slow cat and cow. Just moving and exploring your spine with your breath. Let the tailbone lead the way, the head moves last. Tuck your toes under, stretch the bottoms of your feet. So as you're doing cat and cow, you also get a little stretch for the fascia underneath your feet, which is another factor in tightness in the back of your body. One more time. And then from this rounded place, lift up into downward facing dog. Pedal the heels, stretch into the outer edges of the hips, create a nice little twist here.
And then slowly bring your feet to your hands for half lift. Forward fold, grab the backs of your legs, give yourself a hug, pull yourself down a little deeper. Knees bent or straight, your choice. And then with a bigger bend in the knees, grab the block in your hands and come up into chair. So we're gonna be in chair and we've got this block in our hands. So if you've got a pillow or a towel or something, hold that between your hands and you're gonna squeeze. So now the effort to the midline of the body is around chest and shoulders, but you can imagine that that block is still between your knees. Sink a little lower. Lean your torso forward so your back's a little more flat and twist from side to side. Right elbow toward left knee, left elbow toward right knee. Coming back to center, squeeze your block, lift high, come to extended mountain, and then bring the arms behind you. So you're in a little bit of a back bend here. Tall as you can be, squeeze with your back. You should feel a lot of work, a lot of heat in the back of you. Yeah. And as the hands come back to heart center, soften the knees, come down into forward fold. Fingers to the block, lift halfway. Set your block and then downward facing dog. So we'll come forward into plank pose, drop your knees and lower down just one time till you feel yourself touch the block. Point your toes back and then lift into upward facing dog. Legs are off the mat, good. Send your hips back, down dog. Inhale, raise your right leg, bend the knee, open up through the hip and circle your ankle. Squaring the hips, shift forward, knee comes toward right elbow. Hold, feel your core. And then work that foot toward the outside edge of the block. Ooh, Warrior Wednesday, drop your heel. Come up, hands on hips. Warrior One stance. Find your breath again. This time we'll interlace our fingers behind the head. Head presses back into the hands, elbows open. Breathe here. See if you can soften the edges of this pose just a bit. We've been doing a lot of hard work. Do a bit of soft work. It might sound like a contradiction, but it's not. Soft work, easy effort. Reach your fingers up. Lower your hands to the mat. And we're gonna stay in this position, but just come onto your back toes for low lunge. Starting to get deeper into that hip flexor. Drop your back knee. Point your left toes to the back wall. And now this block comes on its low side for your left hand. Bring your right hand to the right thigh and press up into a twist. The right shoulder hugging onto the back. And you can keep your hand here and keep pressing on that thigh. Another option is arm in the air. And I think it feels really nice to have the arm wrapped behind you using the back of that hand as a, a little more leverage. Move the breath deep into your body, your hips, your legs, your low back.
and then slowly bring that arm around and down to the ground. Tucking the back toes. Use your front leg to help you rise up into high lunge. And we'll take a hold of the left wrist and stretch up high, finding all that length in the left side of the body. We've been preparing for this, so just really enjoy those ropey tight muscles starting to let go. There's an unraveling here. Easiness. And then separate your fingers, follow your, your torso forward, let your hands come to the mat and meet me in downward facing dog. Set your block first. We have one more push up. Come forward, drop your knees. And as is the tradition, when it's someone's birthday and we get to the last push up, you have to say out loud, happy birthday. So I'm throwing my own birthday party today. Up dog down dog happy birthday to me press into the front of your palm lift your sitting bones high soften your knees you got all this space in here the left leg lifts and opens circle your ankle feel all this space and then we'll shift forward, left knee to left elbow. Hold, breathe. And then help your left foot to the outer edge of your block. Dropping the back heel, we come up hands to hips, warrior stance. The transitions are a lot of the work in a practice, yeah? All right, once you have your feet established, hands come behind the head, press your head back into your hands. Feel your elbows opening wide, your chest and chin lifting. Deepen your breath. And then release your fingers, lift your hands high and slowly lower hands to the earth. And we'll stay in this stance. Go ahead and come on to your back toes for a low lunge. We'll find another hip flexor. Drop your back knee. Kneeling lunge. And bring the block over to the right. Place your right hand on that block so your torso is a little taller. Left hand to left thigh. Begin to lift and lengthen as you open into twist. You can stay right here. You can raise an arm or wrap. Using that arm as a little leverage. You might just close your eyes and breathe into what you find here. Take one more breath in your twist. And then let that arm come all the way around and back to the earth. Tucking the back toes, lifting the knee. Let's lift into high lunge. <clears throat> and then holding the right wrist. Pull a bit to find that length of that space in the right side of your body. Soft work, easy effort. Notice where you're forcing. Do a little less of that. And we'll release our hands to the mat. You can move the block out of the way. Step to downward facing dog. If you'd like, you can take one more vinyasa. And then on the inhale, raise your right leg high. Exhale, shift forward, draw the knee up underneath you and toward your opposite elbow. And we're gonna slide that leg out through. So you're on the outside edge of your right foot. Right hand comes under your shoulder, left arm opens up. We're in a wide 
side plank. And yes, it's a hard pose. But it's my birthday and I get to choose. <laughs> and you've got this. If you need to drop your right knee to the ground and kneel instead, you can. We're just here for a couple more breaths. And as that hand comes down to the floor, we're going to move right into pigeon. So the right knee to right wrist, that's your reward for that hard pose. We're plenty warm. Scoot your left knee back. Give yourself any padding so you could prop up underneath that hip. You can use your block under your forehead as you lower down. Once again, we're directing our breath into the back of our body. If you know where your sacrum is, can you move breath all the way to the bottom of your spine? You feel your waistband expanding as you breathe deeply. If you've really gotten heated, it's okay to use your mouth for breath, but try as much as possible to breathe through your nose to retain that heat. Just notice what you're feeling, what you're sensing, what's here, what's not here. Let your upper body be a little softer, a little less stressful and strained. If you're on a block, roll your head gently from side to side. Give your brow a light massage. And release your head, come back to your hands. Lift up to a tall spine. And once again, there's that hip flexor. And pull your chest forward, squeeze your shoulders back. And then we'll come into downward facing dog and just go ahead and shake out that leg. And you know what time it is. When you're ready, raise your left leg. Shifting forward, the knee comes to the opposite elbow and then shoots through. Stack your left hand under your left shoulder, open into this strong Bashi Stasan side plank. The kneeling version would look like this. Just put that knee underneath you instead. Deep, fiery breaths, you know what's next. Here for three. Two, one, and lower pigeon. Woo. Left knee, left wrist. Square your shoulders to the top of your mat. Walk your right kneecap back. And if you have something to rest on, find it. Oh, let yourself sigh. You've done a lot of work. Let's move toward rest. Move the breath clear down into the back of your spine. Feel your waistband expanding with your breath. We spend so much of our lives trying to constrict our waistband. Let it expand here. Make your Belt wider, loosen a notch. If you're feeling any sharp pain or extreme discomfort, lift yourself up out of this pose a bit until it's just sensation, it's not pain. If it feels good to massage your forehead, do a little of that.
And then lifting gently up onto elbows and then hands rise as high as you can. Little back bend, heart pulls forward. You might kind of drag your fingers back as you pull your chest forward, get a little more space there. And let's come out of this into downward facing dog. Give that left leg a shake. And lowering the foot to earth. Drop your knees, move your block, and bring yourself down onto your belly. I'm going to do my favorite shoulder opener. So we've done all that stuff for the back. So now we're going to move into the chest. Arms are out into a T. You'll pick up your right foot. Bring your right fingers into a little tent. And then begin to roll over toward the left side. If this hurts your shoulder, bring your arm down a little closer to your body. If you'd like more sensation, you could even take your arm up on more of an angle. Find your place. You are your own best teacher. And you can find, if you just trust yourself, you can find the perfect place. The place where breath flows freely. The place that feels like an exhale to your whole body. Be here. Close your eyes and feel inside this wise place around the heart. The place where all of your answers reside. Your truth lives here. Take a deep breath in right into the front of your left shoulder. Exhale to slowly melt back onto your belly. Move super slow. Turn your right cheek to the ground, extend your right arm, and switch. Left fingertips are tented, left knee flips over toward the right. And again, take time, we've got time here, take time to find the perfect place for your right arm. You'll know when you find it because it feels like home. Come inside, breathe into the space where your heart beats, where your lungs breathe. If you have a question looming in front of you, a life question, ask now while your heart's open, while the space is big and the room is quiet, ask your question. Take one more deep breath into the front of your right shoulder. And on the exhale, melt yourself out back onto your belly. Bring your hands by your shoulders and then pull up from your navel first. Lift yourself up into tabletop and bring yourself around to a seat. And your legs are just crossed easy underneath you. You can sit on a block or a cushion if you like. We've paid a lot of attention to the shoulders, the upper back, a little bit to the hips. We're gonna finish with a couple of neck stretches. These are usually a winner, especially when people have been doing a lot of things like gardening. 
So we're going to take our left hand and place it right here on our right collarbone. And you can kind of pull down so you can get a little grip on those muscles up there in the top of your shoulders. Pull down. The right fingers touch the floor and then the head moves to the left. So we're, we're kind of moving in two directions in the neck. As the fingers walk out, there's a nice long muscle length here. But as your left fingers pull down, that gives you access into the top of your trapezius, the supraspinatus, the top of your rotator cuff. And it just gives us some nice juicy access to all that stuff in there. Your breath is really important here. Just really breathe deep into the space. Explore what it feels like to just super slow, draw your chin to your left shoulder. Keep that pressure with your left hand. And then you're just gonna release your hand, fingertips on the floor and let your chin come to center and just let the back of your neck lengthen. Let there be a little space and length in the back of your neck. Slowly raise your chin. Right hand to right collarbone. Left fingers wiggle out there and then drop your right ear to your right shoulder. So pull down with a little bit of effort with your hand. Find that preliminary goodness there where all those muscles are kind of fighting you. They're doing such a great job of holding your big smart head up on your neck. They do a lot of work. They also hold our tension for us. We're just giving them a little break. And then slowly start to pivot your chin toward your right shoulder. And then notice how that shifts the stretch a bit. Breathe into whatever new thing you found right there. And keeping the head right where it is, just release the right fingers to the floor and then slowly roll the chin to the chest. Again, feeling those muscles in the back, just lengthen, release. Bring your head to neutral. Fingertips come behind you, elbows squeeze back, chest expands. Lift softly. Don't make this the biggest pose you've ever done, but just lift your chin, open your heart, breathe your breath. If you're doing it right, it feels like home. And then release. Go ahead and lower yourself down onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest. Do whatever movement shapes your body needs coming into Shavasana. And we're going to be here in Shavasana for three minutes. So you can place something over you or under your knees. What helps you feel comfortable, able to rest?
Take a couple of slow, deep breaths. And as you do, just wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. And then just start to stretch your body in any way that feels like waking up. Yawning, curving, wiggling. Let that movement help you over to one side. And back to a seat. Just bring your hands together in front of your heart in this gesture of gratitude for yourself, for this amazing practice of yoga that points us home again and again and again. And I'll leave you with the words of the Dalai Lama who was quoting the Buddha when he said, the greatest wisdom is to say, I don't know. And the greatest ignorance is to say, I don't want to know. So may we just look within to find the answers that are right here and trust ourselves, trust our wise selves. Thanks for celebrating with me today, friends. Namaste.